Seymour Hits Rock Bottom from Blue Dwarf. Podcast voiced by David Ball and written on March the 8th, 2011. Seymour had hit rock bottom. He trudged down the corridor wearing a tattered and dirty suit and stank of horrible body odours and fermenting wine-soaked trousers. He had grown a full beard which was unkempt and peppered with grey hairs and cheap Tesco's biscotti. He was pushing a supermarket trolley down the corridor when he saw Rosette waiting at the lift. He didn't stop until he'd run into the back of her shin. She cried out in surprise and pain. Oh, get out of the way then, Seymour said bitterly. I'm waiting for the express lift, Rosette said, and Seymour didn't move. Me too, he said, edging close to her. Rosette sniffed and noticed something really unpleasant smelling. I, yes, well, if you're wondering what that smell is, it's me, Seymour announced. I was drinking some wine last night and missed my mouth, he pointed at his grubby red stained shirt. It was the delightful 48 Chablis, the one from Mollipod. I bought it at that time we went to the Queen's coronation, do you remember that? You know, back in those good old days when I was, he sobbed, a royal ambassador and when I had a daughter. Rosette edged away as he started to cry. She's not dead, Seymour, Rosette thought to say. He rubbed his eyes with dirty fingers. No, but she's all alone, without her daddy. The lift door opened with a ping and they both walked in. Seymour wheeled his trolley in with them. What do you have in there? Rosette asked. Seymour picked some bottles out from inside the trolley. This is a 2034 Andromeda Grigio. This is a 79 Pinot Nova. Really good years. He clutched the bottles to his chest. Yeah, but why do you have them? Rosa asked. I'm going to sell them. It's all I have left, he said. Ever since Queen Brittany died, there's been no need for a royal ambassador, so I've been jolly well unemployed. He stopped to think about it. Me? Unemployed? Like some council estate scum. So where are you living now? Rosa asked. Ah, well, you see this cardboard box, my dear? Seymour said, lifting it out of the trolley. Yeah? She paused as he glared at her. Oh, really? Seymour nodded. But your daughter just saved the Red Dwarf, plus an entire planet of Gelfs. Ah, yes, but she's not here. The Blue Dwarf Local Housing Scheme think I lost her, so they've put me on a register for child negligence and won't give me any way to live. He picked up one of the expensive bottles of wine, opened it and started chugging it from the bottle, then belched. I just don't know what to do, he said. What else could go wrong? Meanwhile, somewhere in engineering, Justin Pancake was attempting to repair the leaking gyro thermometer, but a spark caused a small explosion that burst through the lift shaft. Seymour and Rosette were thrown against the wall as the lift was caught in an explosion and tilted to one side. It ground to a halt with the sound of grinding metal, tearing a large gash in the side wall. Seymour screamed as the lift car rocked, showing a long drop down the lift shaft. They could feel the cable snapping one by one, and at any moment, they would fall to their deaths. This recording is a work of fiction and is in no way endorsed, approved, or even liked by the creators of Red Dwarf. If you want to know more about Blue Dwarf, go to bluedwarf.co.uk.